Good morning everyone and um, welcome to morning prayer on a Thursday. I'm not anywhere glamorous today as you see. I'm, um, I'm in my study and I'm on my own today. Um, Andrew's working and um, I'm, I've got a busy day as well so um, I'm not going out anywhere. I'm going to be stuck here on my computer in various meetings and things. So actually I often say morning prayer here, um, particularly on cold and wet mornings um, when it's dark in the winter and the churches are freezing. Uh, often morning prayer for the benefice, benefice is said here. So quite a usual place for me for morning prayer. Um, if you want to follow along with morning prayer today, um, we have um, readings that um, you can read at home. I'll obviously, as usual, be reading the, the um, sorry, I've got hair in my um, reading the New Testament reading uh, and the other readings set for today if you want to read those at home are starting with the Psalms it's Psalm 14 1 4 um, quite a short psalm so we're also offered Psalm 15 and 16 as well if you would like and our Old Testament reading is comes from the book of Samuel 1 Samuel and it's the whole of chapter 12 and then when we get to our New Testament reading, which I will read uh, a bit later, is Luke 22, verses 47 to 62. So today, Thursday the 30th of July, uh, is a commemoration in the church. Uh, and we commemorate William Wilberforce and uh, other members, uh, slavery campaigners, members of the Clapham sect and others who helped to abolish slavery um, all those years ago. And it's very apt that um, we do remember today because, of course, we've been thinking a lot about Black Lives Matter and thinking about the slave trade. Very much thinking, on the whole, of it in the past, in, in the, these times, in the, in the 1800s, um, when the slave trade was rife from Africa to to America um, via ships from England. Um, but of course the slave trade today is still going on and in fact it is more lucrative than it was then. Uh, even more lucrative than the drugs trade. And uh, you probably know the billions that that brings in. But we don't hear so much about human trafficking, uh, the, the slave trade, the selling of human beings, can you believe it, still goes on. Um, but it's rampant and it's something that we should be aware of and something that we should make ourselves more aware of. Um, <clears throat> so if you're wanting a bit of reading, um, time to go and have a search on, on Google and, uh, and be more aware, something we should be campaigning about and thinking more about, I think. So let's pray. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night is past and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And the Canticle for Thursdays. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Thus says God, who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it, who gives breath to the people upon it, and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, I have called you in righteousness, I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name, my glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. 
And so our reading from Luke's Gospel, Luke 22, 47 to 62. While he was still speaking, suddenly a crowd came and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was leading them. He approached Jesus to kiss him, but Jesus said to him, Judas, is it with a kiss that you are betraying the Son of Man? When those who were around him saw what was coming, they asked, Lord, should we strike with a sword? Then one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. But Jesus said, no more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, the officers of the temple, police, and the elders who had come for him, have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a bandit? When I was with you, Day after day in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this is your hour, the power of darkness. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him to the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, this man was also with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little while later, someone else on seeing him said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I'm not. And then about an hour later, another kept insisting, Surely this man was with them, for he's a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. And at that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord and how he had said to him, Before the cock, cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Actually, in, um, in Jerusalem, this place that we've just heard about in the Gospel is somewhere that you can still visit. It's still there. In fact, you can walk from the valley up the, the stone steps to that courtyard where we hear Peter is sitting, where the fire is lit. Um, and there's a statue there of a cockerel. Um, and it's amazing because those steps you actually you can't now because of conservation worries but at one time and I have been lucky enough to be able to do so you, you can walk up those very steps knowing that you are treading in the same place that Jesus would have done nothing has changed it's quite an amazing feeling and then you reach uh, the complex that is there now the courtyard there's a church there now not surprisingly called St Peter um, and the house is there it's been built over to to uh, conserve it but you can still go into Caiaphas's house and what's more disturbing is that the dungeons are still below uh, and you can go into the dungeons and walk around and you can see quite clearly there um, on the walls, the, the, the little holes in the wall where the, where the chain would have linked in and been chained to the prisoner. But even worse are, are the um, underground dungeons, um, which you can now walk into. But at one time they, they would, they're just cylindrical holes, um, probably about eight or nine feet wide, so reasonably wide. Holes in the ground, deep. Um, 15, 20 feet, um, with just a, a hole in the top where the prisoner would have been, well I was going to say lowered in, but I, I imagine mostly they were just thrown in and left. There was no escape. The, that tiny hole in the roof is the only escape, the only air, the only light. Um, and it's already underground so there's not going to be much light. And I imagine they were left there to die. Um, maybe some were hauled out uh, to be taken for trial by rope, who knows. But that's the place that Jesus was kept that night, in that hideous, hideous place.
place. Um, and that's what he went through for us. And that story about Peter, well, I, I suppose on, on the one hand, actually, Peter was quite brave, really, because he he would have known that by following Jesus and, and going to Caiaphas's house that he, he would be in danger of being discovered himself uh, and that he would be thrown possibly into one of those dungeons and killed, perhaps, put on trial, killed. He didn't know what would happen to him. So actually, he was probably quite brave, um, even though he denied him three times. And it was only you know a few days ago in the stories that we hear Peter saying, I will ne I'll never never deny you lord i'll die before i'll deny you and um, here he is trying to save himself but i wonder what we would have been doing you know if you put yourself now in peter's shoes would you try and save yourself i mean it's good that he saved himself because look at look at christianity all around the world and a lot of that's down to peter But would we? Would, would we deny Jesus? Do we deny Jesus? It's easy, actually, isn't it? Because it's those times like when you're, maybe you're even at the coffee cup in, in church um, with people who don't come to church. Or maybe you're out with friends who, who aren't church goers and they say, you go to church, don't you? And we say, yeah, 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 and change the subject. And we never go into it do we because there's that fear that we'll be thought of as weird people as odd people i guess some of us are a bit odd but that's not just because we're christian that's just people but it's so hard isn't it why why is it that christians are thought of as so odd why are people scared of christians why are we scared to talk about it it's something we need to learn to do better because christianity is dying around the world. Christians are being persecuted all over the world and we're, we're going to be the last left and if we don't hurry up and do something about it there aren't going to be many left. But how do we get over that barrier of awkwardness, of embarrassment or, or whatever it is that stops us talking about? Why aren't we honest and just, why can't we say to our friends, do you know my faith my belief, having Jesus in my life, is so important to me. It's changed my life in ways you wouldn't believe. Let me tell you about what it's done for my life, how it's changed me. Why don't we tell people about how having Jesus in your life, somebody that has your back, somebody who loves you more than anybody else, knows you more deeply than anyone else, even more so than husbands or wives or children or family. God knows everything about us. He knows everything about me. He knows everything I've done, everything I've said, in my, my thoughts. He knows them. And he still loves me and wants the best for me and helps me achieve for him what we should achieve. And what I'm here for, he helps and, and picks me up every time. Why can't we tell people that? Maybe, maybe it's a bit easier now. Maybe not sitting down with our friends in the same way as we used to because we just can't. Maybe because we're, we're talking like this. We could say, well, why don't you look online? Let me give you a link to morning prayer, to Sunday services, to something happening online, so you can learn yourself. Maybe it's easier to be able to evangelise. I know that's a scary word, but maybe it's easier to do it now we're all online. Have a look on Facebook, say to your friends. Have a look on YouTube. Maybe, maybe it's a gift, all this online stuff, to help us tell others what God's doing in our lives. Shall we pray? God, our loving Heavenly Father, who hears the prayers of your children, we 
pray for the church and for all people. We pray for our churches here in this benefice, for our congregations at St Denis, All Saints, St John's and St Mark's. We pray for our congregation churches around us, in our deanery, those close to us, all our Christian friends. We pray for James, our area dean. We pray for our bishops, Tim, David and Debbie. We pray for all of those on our online church who haven't stepped foot in the building, but still come to you, Lord, and want to learn and know you more. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our Queen, the Prime Minister, members of the Cabinet, leaders of all nations, as they tackle the challenges that face the human family. We pray for all governments as they try and look after us in this pandemic. We pray for all who are suffering around the world because of this pandemic, who have lost loved ones, who are ill themselves, who are fearful, those who are still remaining indoors. We pray for all our brothers and sisters who are suffering under conflict or terrorism, under injustice and poverty, natural disaster or environmental damage. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We pray for employers, private firms, local businesses, all those who have suffered economically under this pandemic in these last few months. We pray for all of those who are going back to work, all those who are worried about going back to work, those traveling, those in confined spaces with others. We pray, Lord, that you would be with them and keep them safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all of those in and around our communities who are on the school holidays, even if they haven't been to school for some time. We pray for teachers and staff that they will find rest in these weeks. We pray for families for parents who have been schooling at home and now have children at home for another six weeks. We pray that all may find rest. We pray that some kind of holiday or break for everyone who needs one. And we pray for those who are now stuck abroad, unable to come home, or those who have having to come home and quarantine causing more financial and economic problems for their families. Lord, we hand them all to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for all people who have health needs, painful symptoms, any illness. We pray you give them strength, patience and relief. We pray for those among those we know at the moment. Praying particularly for any who are going into hospital for elected surgery. Any who are in hospital. Any who are suffering. We ask that you bless and support all those who are supporting them. And we remember with thanksgiving all those who have died. We pray for their loved ones in their bereavement and their loneliness. We 
we give thanks for those whom we have known and loved and see no more. And we pray, Lord, that you would grant us with them and all the saints a share in your eternal kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So the collect for today. God, our deliverer, who sent your son Jesus Christ to set your people free from the slavery of sin, grant that as your servants William Wilberforce and all the others who toiled against the sin of slavery, that we also may bring compassion to all who work for the freedom of all the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. And so let us pray with confidence as our Saviour taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.